Um, now, as far as the history goes, the Ghost Adventures crew came in here and they actually brought in a research team of 12 people. Now, over the I've had this place for four years now. Over the four years, we've been told by the family this place was a smallpox clinic, okay? Which it still it was, but not as many people died here as that they said they did. And if they did, then I don't have the records on. It, okay. Now, the, see the bay room windows. Mm -hmm. The bay room windows over to the right was built in 1859 by John Eustis. Okay, that's still true. The second part of the house was added on in 1892. The reason I got added on is because a doctor married into the family in 18, what was it, 1889, 1889 or 90. His name was Dr. James Harvey. Uh, he married into the family, decided he would move in here with the family, and he would add it on and make a clinic here to build up his, his practice. medical practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we were told by the family that he was uh, saving smallpox, tuberculosis victims, that kind of people. Now what we did find out, and we don't have a record of how many it could be, or even if there's, even if there's any truth behind it, we don't have any metal rec medical records. That the uh, Hancock County uh, Commissioner Office here actually got a uh, malpractice suit going against him. We found out he was injecting people with smallpox, hmm. making them sick so he could build his practice up. You know what I mean? He ended up killing 10 people that we know of. One of them was his own niece, which I'll take you inside and show you, okay? We don't have any records on the stuff because they, they either did away with them or they didn't. The records only go back to 1887. Like um, the second part of the house was added on because they used it as a prep room, a funeral room. We do know they showed some funerals in there. Um, church services they gave in there, we do know that. The white thing on the top of it is a vent house, um, but they turned it into a, uh, or it used to be a, a bell tower back in the day, where they used to ring the bell for their services outside mm -hmm. and their church services mm -hmm. inside. It's kind of cool. Um, but in 1932, we did find it right here in the front yard, right past this table, a guy backed over the sun with his tractor and broke his neck out here, killed him instantly. Um, the outside, I'm going to tell you guys, is just as active as the inside. You're not going to just get away from it because you're going to the house. Yeah. Um, if you look past the cornfield here, you'll see a tree line over there. See it? Mm -hmm. now, if, you, right, if you go on the main road you came from and go this way, you're going to see a road called Sparks Road. You turn left on that, and right before you pull in there, you can see a big sign that's dedicated to the massive Fourth of July parties they gave out here. Some of the biggest ones they ever had. The first ones in, in central Indiana were given here. Massive ones. And then they went to that whole malpractice suit thing. Eventually, nobody wanted to come here anymore. So, But if you go down to the very end, that's where the cul-de-sac is. That's where the family cemetery is. Okay. Now there is over 250 people buried over there. Okay. And some of them we know were shown inside the house. Okay. I have some pretty cool records of everything, but as far as death records go, I don't have a lot of those. But we do have pictures of people taken inside the house at the school that were dead. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna take you guys inside. If you got your flashlights, um, uh, one thing I wanted to point out: there's a well inside the house. Okay. It's on the first floor. If you guys ever seen the movie The Ring, mm -hmm. it's just like that. When you guys get next to it, I don't mind you look down. It's 75 foot deep. It's got an actual, it's got an actual spring. It's still active. It runs underneath the house. Don't stand on top of the thing. I got over the top of it. It's just for, just so you can actually look down at it. Mm -hmm. It's so you won't fall through it, but don't stand on it. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Didn't even believe in this shit. I mean, I was in here by myself working for three days straight. Didn't even think about that normal shit. So I actually cut a hole in this wall right here. Had it for two weeks. This is going to be my flow for traffic for my Honda track. You guys know that's where I got this place, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're on the same thing. <laughs> so I actually cut this out. I set my saw, saw all right there. I had a generator running outside. I still do not have electricity in this house. And I was pulling the debris down, which you can see I already got to finish it. I mean, it just spit me out that bad. The thing turned to the side like this and went real slow, then it got faster and hit the door over there. And I thought, okay, I just set a freaking animal finger out of this wall mm -hmm. and it got wrapped up in the cords and dragged it off. That's the first thing I thought. So I get up, I'm looking around, I'm looking for something wrong. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear anything. So I'm like, okay, that's kind of spooked me out. I'm going to go upstairs and get my floodlight system because I had it running upstairs so I could see it there. So on my way upstairs, I get shoved on my left shoulder so hard, it, I mean, it knocked me onto the fucking stairs. And I got up to punch somebody because so I thought somebody was behind me and there was nobody there. So I get up and I run out of here and I left everything in here. I left my generator, I left my saws, I left my everything, man. And I, I left it in here for almost a month and a half. Mm -hmm. And then I came back in, I finally got my brother. I told him what happened to him. I said, you got to go up here and get my shit with me. So we <laughs> came up here and thank God nobody stole it. I mean, the generator had obviously run out of gas, it was dead. So we collected everything up and I was like, you know, two weeks more goes by. And I'm like, we got to go inside and get this thing ready, man. That's what we got it for. So yeah. we come back in here. And we finally got enough courage to come in here. I started drilling holes up here. See them brackets I got up here? Mm -hmm. I started drilling holes through the wall with this real long drill bit so I could run my speaker wire through so we can have this you know, scary sounds in here. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, as I'm pulling the drill back, I hear this little girl behind me say, why are you doing that? And I turn around, and I'm like, and I started yelling for Mark, and he didn't answer me. So I go outside, and I look all the way down to the land, and he's all the way down there, put some sign up. <laughs> and I was like, fuck this, man, I'm getting the hell out of here. And he spook me up. So I get online, and I find uh, groups that like to do, um, I didn't even know this shit existed. I got around and find some groups that do this shit. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just freaky. That still freaks me out if you guys do this shit. Uh, you guys seen the picture of the wheelchair I have in the house? Mm -hmm. Okay, I took it out of here, I told the idiots riding around and taking pictures of it, even though I told everybody not to sit it. So I took it out of here. Um, the last person that died in this house was in 1978. Mm -hmm. The way I found this out is the Buck Creek Fire Department came in and had to do a home inspection to make sure your location is a sound structure to do a home attraction in. They saw the wheelchair, I, I got it with the house when I bought it, and I'm like, holy fuck, would you get that? And I'm like, I got it from the family, why don't you know, what's the big deal that? And I'm like, well, the last person we know of died in this place in 1978, they had to have snowmobiles come up here because the winter storm was so bad and they had to pull her body out of here. And she was 84 years old. Um, we don't have, like I said, we don't have the death records because they, it's like they got rid of everything. Yeah. Okay. And then they can't tell you who the name was because they have a confidentiality law. Mm -hmm. So we, we tried to find it. So we don't even know if it's real or true or whatever, but they told me it was and I believe the fire department. We got a couple investigators just coming here and they were, they had things thrown at them. They had, uh, this is the EVP capital of America. You guys, if you don't leave this location without getting four to five, or more, you, class A EVPs on people home. Okay, when you guys do your investigations here, my best advice to you is to be loud and, and ask questions that people probably don't ever ask. Because I guarantee you, you're not going to ask a question that hasn't only been asked here probably 30 times. Mm -hmm. Be creative, play games. I thought you have a million. All right, thank you. All right, right here. See the bedroom windows? Mm -hmm. This is where we they used to give. Uh, we do know five of the funerals that were done right here in this bedroom area. Now we have on documenta uh, documentation, the second group that ever came in here, which you can get on YouTube and check out, Family Tribe, they recorded organ playing for 15 minutes. They get real loud and they get real quiet. Okay? And they recorded that in here. Now one thing that we found out about that is they probably did have organ music for the funerals in here. And they did get piano lessons in here. We recorded pianos in here. We recorded clarinet playing in here. Uh, we recorded a guy in this room yelling a sermon so loud that you could hear people in the background when he was yelling. It was cool. Um, so this room here. Um, my best suggestion for you guys, if you want to get good activity in the middle of the house, is to be uh, singing some song. If anybody's got a good YouTube uh, or Google app on your phone that can play the music on there, you can do that. Uh, whistling has been really big in the last two weeks. If anybody's a good whistler, this is a good one to try that, okay? Um, this house was built to last for fucking ever, guys. It's, when you guys walk around here, you're not going to hear any creaking floors. Even the stairs are solid. I mean, built out of walnut. And, um, um, not cherry. Uh, my name was cherry. Walnut cherry. I have a parts list. Of the, uh, the whole making of this house, what they used. Okay, so this place, this place was over 150 years old and it was built to last. You notice the outside's falling apart, but the inside looks awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but this room here, uh, we got some really good children EVPs in this room. Okay, we got a girl named Carolyn, which you guys might want to try asking for. Okay, it's a real good one. She's pretty active. And there's a, a, a niece named Rachel Eastis, which I'll get ready to show you her picture in a minute. She was uh, the first victim from the smallpox that he injected. Um, we found out that he brought, I um, forgot to tell you this outside, a scab from uh, the first case of smallpox I ever detected over in Chicago, Illinois. He brought it over here and was rubbing his needle in it, injecting it into people mm -hmm. during their booster shots, and then you know, they would get sick. And then, mm -hmm. and is that the five year old girl? Yeah, the five, five, five years old. I'll show you in the other room. I'm going to take you guys to the, the part. This the next part we're going to do is add on 1892. Okay? Okay. This was actually examined. I've had quite a few medical people come in and try to get their opinions on stuff. This actually used to be medical form that they would use to prep uh, people's bodies and stuff in here, mm -hmm. which I thought was kind of weird. Alright, right over here, this is an original picture of Rachel Eastis. And she gave it to me with the uh, um, wheelchair in there. And I have the whole genealogy on this whole house. But a lot of it was kept such a secret, I don't really know. I thought I knew it all. But... Okay, she's three and a half months old right there, okay? Now, supposedly he injected her with smallpox when she was five and a half years old. Um, she was the first one to die. She's right up in the room right above us. Um, he did it to his own niece, which I think is weird. Now, I forgot to tell you guys, outside, two months ago, we found the original doctor's bag up inside the attic that went with the house. Mm -hmm. The thing was locked for over 130 years. I took it to a locksmith. It was, we, we, had to get, we had to get it open. These two pictures, along with other stuff I'll show you upstairs, was locked inside of it, okay? Right over here, you see the doorway right here? Uh, this is where they used to bring the tuberculosis uh, victims that had passed away from the friends of the family or, you know, media family. 
right through this doorway right here and then take them down to the basement and they would store them down there until you know the kids were gone in the house and then they could bring them in and get them ready for their either autopsy or, or funerals. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not going to go down the basement with you guys just because I don't want to go in there. Alright, this room here, this is what they actually used for the funeral room. They had two uses, okay? Over there, this reminded me, was the clinic. So people would come in here and wait to go see the doctor for the clinic. And then, when this place was showing funerals in here, they would go in there and wait to come in and get their pictures taken with the deceased. Okay? If you look right here, see this doorway sealed up? Mm -hmm. Now it's been told by the families that they used to take the caskets through here. Put them on a horse and buggy, take them all over to the family cemetery, and that's where they bury them over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, you guys ready? You guys go for the downstairs? Yeah. I'm gonna take you guys upstairs. Okay, that's a lot more. You guys will see toys, stuff like this, so watch your stuff. You don't twist your ankle. Alright, people look all kinds of shit in here for the kids and stuff, but before they put all this crap in here, this is the only original one that I got. There was no toys in this place whatsoever. I put that fucker right there, actually against the wall. A group came in here, and right when they put it in, I got out of the garage shop for five bucks. And I said, hey, you guys might want to focus on this thing. And it was kind of paired with the house, I guess. So they put their camera on it out there, and then they went downstairs to unload their van and get all their equipment out. And then after they went downstairs, 12 and a half minutes, man, something came in the room and started writing, son of a bitch, man. Mm -hmm. so it, it shook like this. It was bad. I mean, so you guys have seen it, man. It's been amazing. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. All, right. all the doors, I took the original locks off and put these on here because I didn't have the key for them, and they lock. But... This keeps animals out in the winter time, sort of. Uh, but this right here, all the doors had the old turnkey locks that locked from the outside. My my guess is probably when they had, uh, and they were really old with the door. Uh, when they had funerals going on downstairs, they had some tuberculosis victims or something upstairs. They probably locked them so they wouldn't go out down to the funerals mm -hmm. and probably cough on somebody and spread the tuberculosis or something like that. All right. Um, now, if, a good thing you guys might want to try to do. Um, I don't know who's got the loudest voice, but at about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, if you're down uh, by the staircase, somebody yell, get your ass to bed, what are you doing up? We've heard kids go boom, 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 and running upstairs. <laughs> so somebody can drop, the stairs are the hot spot, so whoever, whoever wants to sit on the stairs, man, I'm going to just stay there and make sure you have something to record with, man. Don't leave that spot, alright? Alright, this room here, now, you see this doctor's bag? That's what we pulled out of here, guys. This is the original from 1892, probably from 1895, actually. Now this thing is old as hell, you can see it's starting to fall apart. I'm, I'm going to let you guys be the last group to use it, okay? I'm going to take it out here tonight.